Hey, look, I shouldn't even have to be doing this, but I think that right now is a very good time for me to go over again grab bags. We've got another cyclone bearing down on us from the Pacific right now, and it's due here in two days' time. I've been the only one out here who's been picking up loose things from my yard, throwing ropes over dodgy shed roofs, putting water into containers, and cleaning drains. Everybody else is just going about their normal daily routines. Two weeks ago, we had two bad weather systems that swept down the country. The first one crippled our largest city's infrastructure and four people actually died in the flooding. Property damage was huge. And then three days later, the same thing happened again. The administration in the, our biggest city is in turmoil. They're wanting to throw the mayor out for, for his response. There's, or lack of it, um, the, yeah, there's um, all sorts of dramas going down. We've had significant earthquakes over the last couple of weeks. Now, a couple of years ago, I did videos on my channel that showed how in my car, I always keep the things I might need in case of an emergency. The first grab bag is a comprehensive first aid kit and a decent sized fire extinguisher. This is a 2 kg fire extinguisher on the bottom of here. This would put out pretty much any beginnings of a, of a vehicle fire if I was to come across one on the road or I could look after my own vehicle with it. But the most important thing and the thing that I really wanted to share today is this. I call this my get home bag. It's fairly well packed. It weighs about 12 pounds. And in here, I believe I've got pretty much everything that I might need for three days, assuming that I had to leave my car somewhere and leg it across country to get home. <laughs> Starting on the outside, I've got paracord that allows me to tie things to the outside of the bag. I've also made sure that there's an excess of it so that I can take this off and use it for other purposes. I've got a whistle on the slider so that I can attract attention. I've got a small Leatherman copy multi-tool with knives and screwdrivers and pliers attached handily to the outside. Inside, it's been a long time since I've been in here, but let's have a look. There's two dust masks. They're good quality ones. In New Zealand, we have volcanoes. There's always chance of an eruption. I've got some paper cups. And I've got a wee bottle of hand sanitizer. In here, I've got cotton makeup removing pads soaked in canola oil. These individually, there's about five or six of them in here, these individually will burn for an hour. They're great fire starters. I've got a nice sweatshirt, more paracord, a couple of good quality bungees with carabiners on the end of them. Here's a survival blanket. Random bread bags, you can never have enough bread bags. If you had to cross some shallow flooding but you wanted to keep your socks dry, you can put a bread bag over each foot and then slip your shoes back on again. It means that your feet will stay dry, just if there's a, a slight chance of getting them wet. I've got some rubberized gloves here, should I have to deal with anything that's mildly unpleasant. Here's my sharp knife. Everybody should have a sharp knife. This is a fold away saw with which I can either cut firewood or I might need to cut a branch that's fallen across a road or blocking a doorway or something. Here's three ready-to-eat meals and packages, along with a large pack of raisins, 
and a large pack of dates. I've got enough here to feed other people. A shower curtain. Now a shower curtain can be put on the ground as a ground sheet. They're quite useful because one end is weighted with lead shot. Um, they're strong and durable. They've got eyes in the top end, so you can tie this down. You could use it for water collection if that was needed. In here, I've got some spare clothes. I've got some thermal underwear, a couple of pairs of undies, and some dry socks. A notepad and pen. You might have to leave a note for someone. You might need to give somebody detailed instructions that they need to take with them so that they can find a particular place or a particular person. A litre of clean water and a stainless steel container. Don't use aluminium, don't use plastic. Because I'm keeping this in the car, it's subject to changes in temperature. We all know what water tastes like when it's in a plastic container and it's sat in your car for a few weeks. No PCBs in stainless steel. I need glasses, so I make sure that there's a brand new pair of reading glasses sitting in here, just in case I'm in a hurry and I forget to take mine with me in an emergency. This is a large insulated ground sheet. You could also wrap yourself up in it if you needed to keep warm. With this and the survival blanket, I'm sure that I could spend a night out in the open. It's been a while since I was in here. I'm not sure what's in this bag, but these are potato chip packets. They're very, very durable. It's um, metalized plastic foil and we'll open this up and see what's inside. It was two years ago when I put this bag together. I get wet wipes. It's a good idea to have a few packets of wet wipes just if you have to clean up anything that's mildly distasteful. I'll tell you what, if you've got no excess to water, just a, a wipe down a wipe down with a wet wipe can refresh you and give you a little bit more energy to carry on in an adverse situation. A dozen tea light candles. Oh, almost a dozen tea light candles. Attached to the inside of the bag here in this little raincoat pocket. I've got a compass, two lighters, a large stick of jumbo chalk. If I need to leave a big message that's going to attract someone's attention, I can write a message on a wall or a door. I've got some AAA batteries. Here's not Here's a Here's another pen. You can never have enough pens and pencils in here. This is a little magnifier that I found somewhere and I just decided it might be useful to put that in there. Imagine if somebody had something in their eye. I can use this little magnifying glass for any delicate work that might need to be done. And last but not least, down the bottom, I've got a 1,400 milliamp charger. Um, this can recharge your cell phone and, and it can give you an emergency source of light for a few hours. So there we go. There's something like 40 items all in a handy bag. In addition to this, I'd recommend that you have a good pair of strong shoes in the car at all times, summer and winter. And then if anything untowards happens, if roads are closed and you can't get home, you've got a good chance of remaining comfortable until things get better. With a bag like this that you can probably put together with things that you already have at home, you're going to be a lot more comfortable and safe in a situation where you can't just turn around and head home.